me now with more. Greg Ipp is the chief economics commentator at The Wall Street Journal. He's the author of the recent piece, Demographics and Debt Hangover, the Long-Term U.S. Growth. Greg, we're looking for good news these days. You got, you got bad news and worse. Yeah, sorry. If you were uh, bothered about the short-term economic outlook, my bad news is that the uh, long-term outlook is actually worse. Uh, and Kelly, we talked about debt uh, in the opening of this segment, but it's almost as much, if not more so, a demographic story, really. I mean, demographics to a great extent is destiny when it comes to long-term growth. And this pandemic, I think, has tended to aggravate two serious problems the United States has had. One is that the um, uh, fertility rate, which was already has been decli declining basically since the last recession, is probably going to drop again. Uh, the Congressional Budget Office thinks it'll fall to 1.6 uh, next year, which would be the lowest in at least a century of data, well below the 2.1 number that we think of as the replacement rate. And so that alone is going to uh, put a serious drag on the population because kids not born next year will not be part of the labor force 20 years from now. Now, what do you do about low fertility? Well, you can increase immigration. But according to the CBO, we're going to have fewer immigrants, too, because of the uh, uh, barriers that were raised to immigration because of the pandemic and the fact that we're having fewer uh, undocumented coming in anyway. So you put those two things together, there's going to be a lot fewer Americans 20 to 30 years uh, from now. And that puts a greater burden on the ones remaining to both grow the economy and sustain the very high levels of debt that we're now carrying and are going to yeah. be carrying. I mean, you could also increase the fertility rate, but that, they're trying that in other parts of the world with mixed success. You know, I asked the doctor when I was there the other day, I said, you know, are you seeing more or fewer patients than usual? And they said for a couple of months when the pandemic first broke out, it, they saw fewer than usual. But in the last few months, it's really picked up and they're seeing as many people in a week almost as they used to see in a month. Um, so perhaps there will be a catch up effect. But it, as we await the answer on that, tell me what you think about the debt situation. I mean, this is going to be the one that drives policymaking near term. Are you expecting something like a Tea Party movement? Would that be premature here? And how do we know what level is a level that hurts growth? Well, traditionally, the sign that you looked for was upward pressure on interest rates. That was the sign that all the government borrowing was competing with the private sector and squeezing out or crowding out private sector borrower, borrowers. That means less investment. You don't see that now, and you actually haven't seen it for a number of years. We're running these very large deficits, and interest rates are rock bottom, and the Fed says it's going to keep them there for the next four or five years. So crowding out is not a near-term problem. But if eventually we get past this weak spot and the pandemic's behind us, and most economists think that that indeed will happen, then interest rates will eventually rise off of zero. And that's when you do worry about crowding out. Now, what would it tell us if interest rates never get back to where they were before and there is no crowding out? It tells you that the fundamentals of investment were already weak. You've heard the expression like the... Uh, um, a secular stagnation or, or, or the global saving mm -hmm. glut. That's basically a story about how uh, investment around the world, not just in the United States, has been unexpectedly weak for some time. Lower investment always equals lower productivity. So that, I think, Kelly, is kind of the, the, the double dagger right now heading, uh, aimed at the long-term health of our economy. Fewer Americans and the Americans that we have will be less productive unless we can somehow have a burst of innovation and animal spirits that like gives us a new productivity boom. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.